Is there anything left of it? That's what I'm going to try to answer for you here on the feed today. Let me show you the satellite picture. And uh, okay, you can see it pretty here. Uh, this is Lorenzo. Look how far north this is. This is 20 degrees north. Uh, what I really should say is look how far south this is. This is 10 degrees north. Now, lots of times when these systems are so far south, there's less what we call Coriolis effect. This occurs because of the spinning of the globe. So the farther you get away from the equator, the more spin there is from the Coriolis effect. The closer to the equator, there's less. So sometimes when these storms are this far south, it's hard to get it to spin up. The other problem with a system this far south, eventually it has this roadblock called South America. The question is, as it gets that far west, will it interact with South America. And if it does, there may not be much left of it here. Let me show it. That's what it looks like. Um, let me show you this too. When I talk about the hurricane season so far, these are the storms that we've had here. And you'll notice this, everything, and I mean everything has been in the Atlantic. We've had zero, and I mean zero storms here in the Caribbean, only one in the Gulf. So, so far, everything has been into the Atlantic. There's only been one landfall in the United States. That was Chantal, though we've had other hybrid systems uh, moving across the Carolina. Uh, one system in, in particular dropped a lot of rain southeast Virginia, but technically no landfalling storms. So right now, I think the epicenter of the hurricane season has been the Carolina coast, especially the Yatter Banks, because of all the damage we've had from the surge. All right, let's talk about this really quick. I want to go back to this graphic quick so you see the, uh, the timing of this system. So as we move forward, it'll start approaching the islands early next week. Okay, so I keep on talking about what's left of it. All right, what is left of this storm that comes eastward? And there's a reason for that here. I have the one graphic here. I, I want to show you the wind shear across the islands and what this system has to get through as we move forward. Now, this is the wind speed at around 40,000 feet. Where you see the dark colors, this is wind shear. This system is going to be tra tracking roughly in this direction as we move forward here. Now, let me go back. This is uh, as we get in the Saturday here. So this system is going to be right around in here. You'll notice that there's some wind shear impacting this as it moves. So it'll be right around in here. There's some wind shear, not a lot. Now, as we head into early next week, this system is going to be approaching this area right here near the islands. There's some west-northwest wind shear here. And the other problem is it could be close to South America. So those are the challenges that this system is going to face. And what I want to show you is, here's some more modeling showing you what where this system is going to move here. And I want to show them to you right now. Let's go ahead to Saturday. This is the American model. Look where it is. Pretty far south. You see all that red? That's the American model. How about the European model? Mm, pretty much the same area. You see that little red area? And then this is the UK Met, a British model, right in here. So they all have it pretty far south by Sunday. How about Monday? All right, here's the American model. This is my concern with this system. All of the modeling shows this. That's the American. Look at the European, pretty far south. Look at the UK Met. They all have it in this zone. That's awfully far south. And that's why I think this system between the shear and it getting very close to the South American continent early next week. This could be shredded away, and there won't be anything left of it. That is a possibility. However, here's the concern. All modeling are showing this. Here comes, look at the American model, showing this area of increasing red here, south of Hispaniola. How about the European? Same thing. Little area. In fact, go, as we go forward here, look out of the European, continues to show this, getting just south. There it is, south of Hispaniola, when? Late next week. There's the European model. Here's the American model. They have it as a hurricane, but they all have it, all have it, surviving into this zone. Okay, based on that, we're always talking about wind shear. What does the wind shear look like in this area during that time? So we're talking about Thursday of next week. What does it look like? Take a look at it. So it's going to be right in here. All of the modeling show that it's right in here. Look at this. 
and what's going on in this area late next week. A big upper high. And underneath upper highs, what do you get? Low wind shear. Hmm. And then take a look at this. Look, and we've been showing this every day now. Look at this warm water located where? Right in here with low wind shear. If this survives, if this survives, I'm concerned it can go fast and go very fast. What would happen after that then? Well, it all depends on this dip in the jet stream that we're going to be looking at off the East Coast. This dip in the jet stream, this could take it right toward the East Coast of the United States uh, 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 10 to 14 days from now. Now, if it misses this connection, it goes into Central America. But I'm telling you, if this survives, look out from Florida along the East Coast. And that's the feed.